Hi all, and welcome to the Medical AI Lab reading group session. This week we have lab member Vrishabh Krishna present statistical comparisons of classifiers over multiple data sets, a paper that came out in 2006 that has received over 10K citations. Vrish, looking forward to your talk, take it away. Thanks Pranav. Um, so I'll be talking about statistical comparisons of classifiers over multiple data sets. Um, so essentially, the current problem that this paper basically tackles is um, how do we look at comparing different models over uh, a given data set? And this is like the standard uh, setup in most machine learning papers where we have this new model or a new architecture or a different post-processing system. We, we compare it with different models on the same data set, like with different metrics, and maybe even use cross-validation to reduce the variance. And we see that finally the model does improve on certain specific metrics. Maybe there's a 5% bump in accuracy or something. But this could also be due to like random variations in the data set, which particular train and test splits you use and other uh, aspects like that. So can we really say that this new model is actually better at this particular task? So here where, here's where we basically use statistical significance tests to make this, uh, like make this assumption and, and actually uh, demonstrate this. So just an overview of uh, significance testing in general, you start with a null hypothesis, which is basically the opposite of what, of what you wanna prove. It's a very bland uh, assumption. Like if you're trying to say, I have a sudden change or an increase in a particular value, you'll assume as part of your null hypothesis that there is no real difference between this particular value or no significant difference. And you have a certain sample of data, for example, the accuracy value that you would, that, we, that you obtained. So um, basically how we do significance testing, I think currently is it's kind of proof by contradiction. You assume that the opposite of what you want to prove is true. Then you obtain the probability that like this particular sample of data has been obtained given this assumption. And since this value is very, very small, you can say it's improbable. So your null hypothesis is not really true. That's, I think, an overview of uh, significance testing. So uh, in general, when you have maybe just one model and one data set, you uh, report co confidence intervals uh, of a particular metric on that data set. And you do that maybe with Crossval or something like that. But if I have to compare two models on a single data set, uh, I have to use a number of different tests to do that. Because uh, if I just use the uh, cross the, the confidence intervals and just compare them, then since I'm doing it on the same data set, the samples that I take, uh, they may not be independent and certain assumptions may not hold. So in that case, we need to dig a little deeper. So there are two tests which have been made for this particular process, and I'd be uh, going into a little more depth on the phi cross two cross validation test. So essentially we have two models, A and B on the same data set. And we take this data set and split it into two folds, 50-50, and do that five times, like generate five different folds of 50-50, like uh, of a 50-50 split, like this. And on each of them, we take each of our models, we, we uh, train it on the first split, test it on the second split, and obtain an accuracy metric on the test uh, set. Then we take the difference between these two metrics of the two models, we take their variance and their mean, and then we keep uh, we calculate that over all the five different folds, and then we obtain the t statistic. So then this t statistic is distributed according to the uh, student distribution. So using this, we can get our p value. That's essentially uh, an overview of this particular test. And this test is, I guess, a more standard scenario that you would see where I just have two models and a single data set, and I just want to compare them. So uh, I have here a, a bit of code where this. It's actually really simple to do this with scikit-learn using the ML extend um, package. So essentially here, I've taken the iris data set and I've run it and I see that there's a there's like maybe a 3% or 4% difference between the accuracies. Now, generally what I would say is maybe, okay, yeah, this looks pretty good, pretty promising. I would think that the logistic regression model is pretty much better than the decision tree. But if we dig a little deeper, we see that it's actually not true. This is not enough because the iris data set itself is not large enough for this to be statistically significant. So here, uh, this assumption would have been wrong. And 
although it's maybe kind of on the borderline, this helps us make it clear that this is actually not significant. On the other hand, if we used a much simpler model and then just ran this test, we would be clear that, yeah, this decision tree with only a max depth of one can only learn a much more simpler decision boundary, which is why its accuracy is significantly uh, worse than the previous one. So um, that's essentially when I have uh, two models on a single data set. But now we're looking at many mul uh, at multiple data sets like ImageNet 1K, uh, ImageNet, Cypher, and so on. And we're comparing models over all of these different data sets, maybe even over multiple tasks. In that case, we need tests for many different data sets and comparing different models over those. So the first major test that we see is the paired t-test. And essentially uh, how it's set up is if we have metrics for both of these models on let's say the ith data set out of n data sets, we're looking at the differences between these statistics uh, over the different data sets. And essentially this value, we, have, we can obtain the t-statistic using the, the distribution of, this, uh, of these differences. And again, we can calculate a p-value through that. But here's the problem. Um, the differences don't exactly have a very clear meaning because uh, so while I can have the difference between these two models on the same data set, I can't really compare the differences across data sets. For example, like Cypher maybe has a fewer number of labels that might be a simpler task and therefore a difference of like 2% on that is a bigger problem than a difference of maybe 3% on image or some, some scenario like that, in which case, the paired t-test here doesn't make uh, too much sense, like maybe over uh, different tasks and data sets over different tasks. So web, uh, in 2000, uh, web basically tried to solve this issue and made a weaker test that essentially takes uh, the ratio of the different values and the geometric mean of that. And this makes sense uh, because essentially the, the ratio negates any such differences across different data, uh, across different tasks. And there are similar versions of this where essentially we take ratios and we can negate this difference, but then the test just ends up not being as powerful. But there's even a deeper issue where uh, you usually don't have more than 30 data sets that you're comparing against. And that causes serious issues because you have to assume uh, normality over uh, the, different, uh, the different variables you're considering. That may, may definitely not hold. So we have to look at different kinds of tests for this particular, uh, for this particular system. So the next type of test is uh, basically a sort of uh, small change to the pair T test, where instead of looking at the actual differences, we're looking at the rank. So we essentially list all the differences uh, that the classifiers have like in their performance, and we rank their absolute values so rank here means like I essentially list them, list the absolute values of the differences in a list and like what number is it on the list? Use that number as my rank. And essentially what this says is, okay, which, uh, uh, so for which like R plus essentially means which of these uh, models, like what's the rank uh, of the differences in which model A, let's say does better, B does worse, something like that. And essentially using that, I can, uh, uh, calculate the Z score. So here Z is going to be normally distributed and therefore I can again get a P value. So it's, it's kind of like uh, measuring, okay, yeah, here I win, uh, I win by this amount and depending on which data sets I win by and like how much I win by, I can say this is statistically significant or not. So Brish, this test you, is a little- Brish, sure. could you just walk through, uh, walk through these uh, expressions? Sure. So uh, R plus, so here rank D, sub, uh, D of I for D I greater than zero essentially means that like A is greater than A has a better performance than B. And the rank of this difference is essentially in the list of all differences in the absolute value. Where am I? So if I have a, a like a lower rank, it means that my model is much better. Um, like this model A has a much more significant difference in B in these particular tasks. And therefore I can, can consider that. This di equal to zero means that the performance is equal on these tasks. So essentially, I don't really, uh, like I just add those half and half to both of these expressions. So that's essentially like how you use the rank. Then you use the minimum 
of, of these two values and then use that to calculate the z-score. I'm not perfectly sure how each of these, uh, how the later expressions come about, but the like the broad uh, analogy is like, okay, can I count wins uh, between like the two models and use that and like measure these wins with the rank and use that to calculate the z-statistic, if that makes sense. If you uh, just, just thinking about the ranks, the rank is between the N data sets. So they're N. Yeah. There's just two things to rank, right? There's just the. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so here, the, the, these are the difference between data sets. So uh, you have N differences, right? So for each data set, you have a difference. And you're looking at the absolute value of D. So essentially, if I have two models, and let's say two data sets. Uh, on one data set, uh, the difference between model A and B is like maybe uh, 10. Like I have a 10% increase in, in A's performance with respect to B. And B is maybe better than A by like 2% on the second data set. In which case, like I'll, I'll say R plus is one and R minus is two. So like uh, that's essentially how you calculate that. Then T would be uh, two. Oh, sorry, T would be one. So you're, you're trying to take the maximum and you're just like tending towards the uh, uh, maximum uh, value, like maximum performance uh, in some sets. Got it. I think this, this so th this is the Wilcoxon test and this test is a little bit complicated. Uh, in general, I think a better rule of thumb is this, this test, which looks very simple. If I just take all the performances and look at it in a grid, like just look at it as a table and count the number of times one model wins out over the other. If that number is greater than n by two plus square root of n, this difference is significant. This like definitely looks like a much e easier result for maybe us to apply. Although it's not particularly powerful. For example, if I have maybe 20, uh, like 20 data sets, I'd have to be better at four, two, 14 of them. And at that point, even you can say that, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that this is going to be much better, but this uh, characterizes that with significance. So uh, the next is the obvious generalization of this is what if I don't have to, what if I have multiple models on multiple data sets? And this is not straightforward as, as just taking the different pairs of models and just comparing over that, because you have something called the family wise error, where essentially if I do that, then the probability of making like, of like falsely rejecting the null hypothesis increases like, because I'm taking the, the product of different probabilities. So at each point I'm gonna be uh, saying, okay, yeah, there's a certain probability that this is not true, this is not true, and this is not true. And rather like, since I'll be taking the multiplication of the different p-values, the p-value will actually increase in a certain sense. The actual net p-value would increase in a certain sense. So this is a, bit of an issue where you have to use different statistical tests for this. So we use ANOVA, which is, I guess, a very standard method in statistics for comparing differences. But ANOVA itself has similar issues like the pair t-test where like you have to assume normality and other aspects. So instead, you have the same kind of generalization that the Wilcoxon has of like ranking uh, differences that the P, uh, compared to the t-test, where essentially you consider these ranking and then uh, like compare that with uh, compare that with your values, and that essentially gives you a p-value for the whole distribution. So here, uh, this is so this looks like a lot of numbers, and it's easy to kind of get lost in this. But uh, here again, this is where they used the Friedman test and basically computed ranks for each of these values and started uh, uh, just nullifying a lot of these results. So it turns out that only a very few of these numbers actually ended up being significant. For example, while it seems like a lot of these models on many different tasks, like here, you see on this task, this one seems to be much better uh, compared to this one and, and so on and so forth. If you start observing, uh, you won't be able to really make a comprehensive view of uh, which particular model is better than the others. And with these tests, you'll be able to like comprehensively say, that this particular model uh, is better, uh, is, is much better than this particular model and this particular model, whereas this particular model can be on, on both sides of the fence in either case. Uh, so 
that that seemed a little bit hand wavy, but uh, the actual results themselves involved a lot, lots of calculation. And when you actually ended up doing the calculation, you will find this particular value ends up uh, being pretty clear that you can't make a statistically significant uh, claim for C four point five and CF, whereas you can do so for the other three. And uh, in terms of how you would report this on maybe a paper, um, the, main, the main way that uh, this paper talks about it is using critical difference plots. Essentially, uh, if we take the same models that we used before, you plot their ranks, uh, the ranks of the average ranks of all of these models uh, on, a, on a line. And you join the different models where you can't say they're statistically significant. So the models which do not have a line between them, like have a significant difference between them. So uh, C4.5 and the last two have a significance between them. Whereas this guy is not significant anywhere, which is uh, what I said, which, what, which is what came up uh, uh, on, the previous, uh, on the previous slide. So um, here, like the, the, I guess the inference you could make out of this is that adding M makes a significant difference, whereas adding CF does not make a particularly significant difference. So in general, uh, this provides a sort of procedure for applying statistical testing when you have a bunch of models. But uh, there are a few problems with these sort of tests is you can, you can misinterpret them as well as you can like stress on the results and ensure that you, uh, like you're optimizing for uh, statistical significance and try to ensure you're reducing that p-value. Um, the fact is, it, it, while, while these are fair, uh, fair views, there is, there is much, there is like a significant improvement when you add these significance tests, because then you can immediately say that, okay, there is at least a certain amount of difference between them. And it sets a certain bar that instead of saying just one, 2% as your improvement, you can say that this improvement is like not just due to chance, at least to some extent. And definitely they should not be the deciding factor for any publishing work. So this paper was written in 2006, but uh, in my opinion, I have not seen a lot of papers that use this outside of maybe healthcare uh, and AI and healthcare papers. Uh, the, the paper itself uh, lists a number of problems like that uh, at, at that time, the uh, community was facing saying that they wanted uh, statistical significance to be reported in a lot of papers, but they weren't really getting it. And that is still kind of continued today. While I guess uh, like a lot of these significance testing requires running the same model a number of times on the data set, and we have much larger models. So that's maybe one of the problems. I think it still should uh, reach a point where we have to do this at some point. We also, this paper also like stresses on non-parametric statistical tests so that you don't have too many assumptions on the data and you're getting a more general idea of p-value while that reduces the power of your test uh, to some extent, it definitely like improves in generalizability. And this is extremely helpful uh, for fields like healthcare and biostatistics where already the uh, doctors and uh, biostatisticians, they really require uh, these sort of uh, these sort of statistics. Me personally, I had, uh, like, I was a little confused why the author did not talk about bootstrapping because I thought uh, when they are making all these assumptions, in, in my naive view, when you're making all these assumptions about uh, the distribution, maybe you could have used bootstrapping to reduce the requirement for that. But uh, I guess in general, he does take he does take methods that do not require major assumptions about the distribution. So that also still works. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Great. Uh, thanks, Fresh. Thanks for your presentation.